So in this video, I'm going to give a brief overview about what restriction enzymes are and what we can use restriction enzymes for. So to begin, restriction enzymes, another name for restriction enzymes, you'll sometimes hear restriction enzymes be referred to as a restriction endonuclease. And so you can take a look at this picture here. The restriction enzyme is this green blob. And so the enzyme is a protein that is going to cut DNA at a very specific sequence. And so that's the most important part about a restriction enzyme is it's going to cut it at only one particular sequence. So in this situation, we have GAATTC. And then on the bottom, we have CTTAAG. And so the restriction enzyme is only going to cut the DNA if it sees those exact same sequence of nucleotides. And so I just realized I misspelled palindromes, but usually these sites that restriction enzymes cut at are palindromic, which means that it'll read the same forward and backward. So an example of that in our language is madam or for example, race car. And so in this example, you can see that this restriction enzyme cuts the DNA so that it's staggered. It's almost like a Lego block and it'll fit together perfectly. And so pretty much using restriction enzymes, what we can do is we can combine different pieces of DNA. And another thing I wanted to mention is that sometimes the restriction enzyme will cut it into this staggered piece, will cut the DNA into a staggered piece. And so these are called sticky ends. So sometimes the cuts are uneven, and when they're uneven, it's called a sticky end. Other times, the enzyme can cut it like right down the middle. And this will produce what we call a blunt end. But as you may imagine, sticky ends are more useful because they can attach at the specific sequence that you want, while blunt ends are kind of harder to attach back together. If you ever work in a genetics laboratory, you're going to use restriction enzymes often because you're going to want to create new sequences of DNA. And another thing that's pretty cool is in bacteria, there are restriction enzymes that will cut viral DNA to allow the bacteria to defend itself against viruses. And so these bacteria have their own restriction enzymes. And so if foreign DNA comes in, such as a virus, it will cut the DNA at the specific sequence and it'll make it so that the viral DNA cannot get incorporated into the bacterial DNA. So it's a good defense mechanism for bacteria. And lastly, restriction enzymes do not discriminate. So you could take a restriction enzyme from a bacteria or whatever else you want to take it from, and it will cut the same sequence of DNA no matter if it's from um, bacteria, viruses, or humans. But one small Thing to keep in mind is that there are ways to defend against this and so obviously if you are a bacteria with restriction enzymes you don't want to cut your own DNA so there are ways to defend against that but we will talk about that in future videos and in the next video we're gonna do a practice problem about how to determine what restriction enzymes cut and what results will be produced and so that pretty much sums it up for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to write them below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you liked it. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.